सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला न लोगों की परवाह न दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो आरोप हम सफर में रविंद सिंह के साथ हाउ वुड यू लाइक टू स्पेंड योर मॉर्निंग यू कुड स्पेंड योर मॉर्निंग लाइक दिस Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM. Today is Hit Music. Tonight, elections likely to be held by 3rd September 2014 with plans for one-day polling. Four new X-ray machines at Nandi International Airport to enhance border security, and three million dollars still owing in FNPF contributions. Good evening. I'm Jackie Spade, and you're watching FBC News. The government is working towards holding elections by September 3rd, 2014. as stated in the draft constitution and the minister responsible for the elections Ayasaid Kayum says they are working towards having only one day of polling Said Kayum made the announcement at a press conference in Suva this afternoon Said Kayum also says the constitution will be ready soon but didn't give any specific dates so everybody will have only one vote uh, we also uh, are targeting to hold the elections in one day So that obviously we mean in terms of the logistical arrangement that will change. Uh, we need to ensure that some of the anomalies that took place in the 2006 elections do not take place. Um, but the deadline, as you know, in the draft constitution is to have the elections by 3rd of September 2014. Nandi Airport has four new X-ray machines to detect prohibited items, such as drugs being smuggled into the country. At the launch, it was revealed that there were more than 40 cases of narcotics and arms at the airport last year. Christopher Chand has more. Apart from drugs and arms, there were about 28 cases of money laundering and 10 cases of smuggling detected at the airport. The work of customs officers can never get easier, with criminals getting smarter and more creative in trying to sneak in prohibited goods. These machines are state of the art and provide us. with a new and upgraded line of defense against the importation of contraband and illegal items in the Fiji. Every incoming passenger will have their luggage screened in a manner that compiles with the latest international standard which Fiji is committed to meet. The new machines are worth over half a million dollars. The new facilities will offer border security an added boost With a huge influx of visitors arriving into our shores, for us it's, uh, it's a big milestone um, in terms of detection. Um, very much we are only relying on uh, uh, body search, uh, intelligence information being, uh, being uh, exchanged amongst enforcement agencies. Tiko Levu says organized crime syndicates are operating through networks, engaging in cross-border fraud, smuggling drugs and dangerous and harmful goods. money laundering and trading in counterfeit goods and of course Fiji is a hub uh, as we know uh, with the shuttle seven so uh, we are more often than not we are used as a transit point so having those machines will really help us to detect those uh, illegal imports eh? customs has seized items used to manufacture methamphetamine concealed in battery compartments and flashlights some were found in bags of kava christopher chant FBC News. Around three million dollars in FNPF contributions is still owed by employers, as Mikalonga reports. This is the balance after 348 companies paid their dues. Employers owe a total of 8.2 million dollars in members' contributions. Out of that, about three million is unrecoverable due to due to ceased uh, businesses, businesses that have stopped. Realistically, we're looking at about a three three million. 
Uh, so we are hoping to get the maximum. The FNPF has intended to extend the amnesty period after receiving requests from companies. We would like to encourage everyone that haven't taken advantage of this opportunity. All employers out there, please make sure you take advantage of this final opportunity that will be announced shortly. Uh, that is until the end of July. So make sure, those of you that are arranging finances with your companies, this is the time. According to the FNPF, affected members have lost out completely on the interests over the years because of the unpaid contributions by employers. So this is why the advice that we always give to all workers, all of us that are working, sometimes you, your pay slip can indicate that that money is deducted, but that money has rightly not been credited to the Fiji National Provident Fund. So it's important that we as workers also take the time to come to the fund to check on our balances. Our superannuation fund plans to do nothing more for now but to deliver excellent customer services and grow the balances of members' funds. Mikalonga, FBC News. 111 police recruits have been told to keep their political differences to themselves and ensure the safety of every citizen. In launching the recruits training in Suva this morning, Deputy Police Commissioner Ravi Narayan said the force demands the highest level of discipline and service. They are not giving With fresh haircuts, donning their uniforms for the first time, yourself. these future police officers got a stern warning from their second in command. We will not condone any act of misconduct and you will always be held accountable for your actions and inactions. You must not be swayed by emotions and so remain a police officer in and out of uniform. Reminded of the vital duty a police officer plays in the community, they were also told to be wary of politics. You are to remain apolitical at all times. You may have your own political affiliation, but that is something that should remain inside you. You are to remain neutral and do not get yourselves involved in political issues or comments. Of the 111 recruits, 23 are young women. 20 from this group will undergo cadet officers training and graduate as inspectors. Emotions ran high as these recruits saluted the second highest ranking officer in the force. So when you talk about policing today, it doesn't, you need, don't need a, need a Rambo uh, in policing. What we need is a uh, person with strong character, mind and the strength with the leadership uh, ability to lead the group and to um, uh, serve the community as they are uh, required to be uh, served. Training proper begin next week. Mikalonga, FBC News. Coming up, Lombasa Mill on peak performance, but cane supply is low. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam. Every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Isambulu binaka, pedango wadi sori ndalai, na makiwa mani wasi nengono borota kina lali nekabi, maina tolu kina bitu, ena moni tingi na poro mbuka, ena mbula FM, na bandu ena serre. Welcome back, you're watching FBC News. The Lombasa Sugar Mill is operating on a stop-start basis because of inconsistent cane supply. Farmers say the poor condition of cane access roads is to blame. Ritika Pratap reports. The Lombasa sugar mill began crushing two weeks ago, and while the mill is up to par, farmers are unable to supply cane on time. Cane excess roads are said to be in poor state, even though $2 million has been allocated for repair. I've already got three loads of cane lying on the field, but last night the rain, because of the rain, we could not load it. If the road had been repaired, we could have transported that cane to the None of the roads in my area has been repaired. If it remains like this, we will stop harvesting. I have a cane access road. Even the contractors made only one, uh, one load. They haven't uh, been up till now because it's very high time now. I am harvesting on my own. Uh. 
a lack of water in some areas is also proving a hindrance. Every time when we call to the authority, only that day, on that night, we get the water. Maybe once or twice a week. The main issue is that we have extra labors, but there is no water supply. We are very worried about this. Farmers have welcomed the fair trade certification which began last year. Many are hoping for a good payout. They have given the bean seeds and uh, some vegetable seeds. Uh, they used to give the chemicals, knife, hand gloves. Paracord, they are giving five dollars per, per bag for money for this year. They provide us with a knife, file, uh, we decide, and uh, some allocation for the planting of new cane. An estimated 1.8 million tons of cane is expected to be crushed by all mills this season. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The law firm of Fire and Company is calling on municipal landowners and the general public not to be carried away by false information in regards to the compensation payouts. Lawyer Isireli Fa says landowners must trust his firm because there are attempts to disrupt the payment of the compensation. Apisola Mibaka reports. Isireli Fa says landowners in Monosabu must not be swayed by misinformation that comes from unreliable sources. To the Monosabu landowners that uh, you know, not to get sidetracked by false information. Uh, false information has been the cause uh, of uh, disputes within the landowners and has also been one of the, has also been used to hold up uh, the payment of the monies. Fa, who represented the landowners in the High Court Compensation case, says landowners shouldn't give any weight to outsiders since they are not involved in the payouts. And I'd like the landowners to please do not accept any information on Monosavu if it does not come from fine company. And I think uh, to the public uh, who from time to time get involved in these discussions uh, out of interest or out of referrals, please advise people that the only correct information they can rely on is information given out by fine company. Distributions of compensation payout will resume in September and landowners will need to update their Wallini Kambula registration by then. One very problematic issue that we've faced in the past is when uh, some landowners don't realize that their records with the VKB are not updated and as a result there's uh, con concern that they didn't get their share. Uh, and that's simply because the landowners have not taken the steps to update their books. Monosabu landowners representative Tomasi Tigunilia says they are now working on registering an association to look after the welfare of landowners. Apisalo Medoka, FBC News. The Land Transport Authority has recorded a total of 21,000 traffic infringements for the past six months. The authorities say speeding leads the list as the most common traffic offence. Last year, the LTA recorded a total of 70,000 infringements. LTA CEO Naisa Tuinadeva says this is an alarming rate for a small country like Fiji. But if we are able to control this, then this will be better than uh, last, uh, last year. And I think that is the whole purpose why we are coming back with this emphasis on a road safety uh, month. See, we don't want the money. We're not worried about the money. We want to reduce the number of, um, you know, of our problems of bookings on our roads. Vivia Island in the Lao Group has been declared a fully organic island. It's banned the use of fertilizer for the last eight years, promoting organic produce. Fuzito Kotewasawasa reports. All the food grown on Vivia Island is free of fertilizer or any other chemical. Going organic means that we are no longer using fertilizer chemicals to assist with growth of our farm produce. Erroni Lovanadala says this milestone achievement encourages healthy living and also preserves traditional farming methods passed down from generations. Now in Vivia, we are still maintaining traditional farming methods and we have discovered how healthy our food produce is. Virgin coconut oil is Divya's main source of income and having organic certification is a marketing tool for the Agriculture Ministry. Producing a large volume that is being 
uh, sourced uh, for the local market and after this uh, gaining certification I think it will allow our VCO products uh, oil to for export uh, internationally. People on the Via now have fresh chemical free food such as taro, cassava, sweet potatoes and tapioca leaves. With the success of the Via Island, the government wants to implement the same system in Rotuma where fertilizer use was banned two years ago. Vasita Kotimasawasa, FBC News. The United States Embassy in Fiji celebrated the U.S. Independence Day with the theme Lady Liberty. The embassy brought together government representatives, the diplomatic corps and U.S. citizens based in Fiji for the celebrations. Chanel Sivan was at the event. In the year 1776, or 237 years ago, the United States of America declared independence from Great Britain. For the embassy, these celebrations provided a chance to reflect on relations with Fiji. So we take the time to celebrate here in Fiji the continued strengthening and expansion of the U.S.-Fiji relationship. Permanent Secretary for Foreign Affairs Amena Yovoli commended the U.S. government for backing reforms in Fiji. We look forward to your continued assistance in transnational issues like human trafficking and support towards our students for further studies abroad. Lest I forget, Fiji is always indebted to the U.S. Peace Corps Volunteer Program for their invaluable service and kind spirit towards our schools and our communities. With two centuries of independence, the United States has assured that its bond with Fiji remains. God bless Fiji. Our support of a Fiji that represents the values and incorporates the ideals of all Fijians. Know that we stand with the people of Fiji and know that our commitment to the wonderful people of Fiji has never wavered. In the U.S., people spend the day with family and friends. At the embassy in Suva, a taste of American culture was on offer for guests. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. And we turn to sports now and Jamie's here with the latest. Good evening. Our seven teams arrived home today and contrary to reports, men's coach Alibretti Ndere has no plans to step down anytime soon. Find out more after the break. I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Jaha ho pyar ka basera. Aur rishto ki khushbu. Wohi aapka apna ghar sansar. Join me on Ghar Sansar. Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. Only on Radio Fiji 2. Welcome back. First up tonight, the Rugby Union out to New Zealand in their Sevens World Cup maintains that Fiji has had a good season. Shelvin Chan reports. The Fiji Sevens team returned this morning after another unsuccessful World Cup outing. Coach Ali Veretindere says he will not be stepping down and hopes to continue as the coach of the Fiji 7s team. For the record, for the two seasons that I'm uh, in charge of the 7s, I think uh, we've been in five uh, tournaments, plus the semi-final in the World Cup. He told FBC Sports that he wants to stay on because he's the one who brought free-flowing rugby back into the team. For the previous coaches and I think we, they just uh, go in and just apply their, their stiff cut and everything but they didn't have an idea in putting up uh, this, uh, this uh, pattern of, uh, of play. So I came in with a pattern of play and tried to bring back that uh, style of training to suit this uh, type of play. But this was not fully backed up. So why didn't we get to see this free-flowing style of rugby in Moscow? We've shown it in the first uh, 
first game. So in the uh, second, uh, in the knockout stages, uh, we are very conscious about that, uh, that play. Ndere says he will give his report to FRU and let them decide on his future. His time is up at the end of the month. Shelvin Chan, FBC Sports. The real stars from the World Cup outing, however, were the Fiji women's team. The Fijiana returned home with the bowl, their best ever finish at a top-level competition. Shelvin Chan again. The success of this team can be traced back to April when coach Timothy Wainingolo called for fresh trials, seeking out women in different sports. From there on, he molded the team and returned from Russia, head held high. It was new on the first day. You know, you know that's a venue and the place we are. It's a big difference. And again, some of them, it's the first time to play in offices. But in second day, they, they've done well. We beat uh, Springboks in the quarterfinal. We beat France in the semi-final. We beat, uh, beat Brazil in, uh, in the final. The ninth place finish means Fijiana doesn't get to be part of the next IRB series. But there still may be room to sneak in. Uh, yeah, we are talking about it. So we need to be Fiji can uh, make it, uh, if we make it 16 teams, I think Fiji will be included and the invitation will come. Yeah. Wainingolo has come back with a mission. Stronger team, we need, uh, if we are wrong run, we need the young girls, some in the schools, we need some clubs like ACS, Jasper, we need some uh, uh, clubs uh, coming from there. I think there will be a competition for the women's team in Fiji. While critics had written them off, this band of girls took on the challenge and did the nation proud. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. We need an in-depth study into rugby-related neck injuries. This is one of the concerns brought up during Fiji Rugby's Centennial Conference in Suva yesterday. Talin Kadaka reports. A student died after breaking his neck while playing rugby last year, and another is now paralyzed. In 2012, there were five serious neck injuries from rugby. That's all we know. On uh, trying to uh, research a little bit more on neck injury and what could be done to prevent this. So you see there's a lot more room uh, for research into this field. And we hope that after this conference there will be more research done into, um, into rugby and other sports for that matter. This issue didn't fall on deaf ears. Rugby executives agree we need to find out what we're doing wrong. On, on neck injuries, something that is uh, very relevant uh, to, to Fiji. And, uh, um, you know, we have a lot of experts are here that are here, sports scientists. And, uh, and we look forward to, uh, you know, continuing to learn. Injuries are to be expected on the rugby field, but death and paralysis are things that neither Fiji rugby nor budding players are willing to risk. Talendo the Kavaka, FBC Sports. The Super Masters soccer team has presented their jerseys today as they prepare for the Fiji New Zealand Veterans Soccer Tournament this weekend. Former district reps such as Tony Watisoni, Ravuama Mandingi, William Lasanga and George Brown will make up the core of the team. Organizers say they will use this tournament to promote healthy living and fitness. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to focus on those who were former reps, former soccer reps, former, um, yeah, anyone who played soccer and who is over 35, okay, we're trying to bring them back into soccer, you know, trying to keep that passion. Eight teams will be particip participating this weekend with six of those from overseas. The two-day tournament begins on Friday at Prince Charles Park. The Fiji Under-19 cricket team lost their second match in the East Asia Pacific Region Tournament in Australia today by 35 runs. However, yesterday they did start the tournament with a win beating Samoa. Samoa bat first and were all out for, 130, for 32 runs thanks to some brilliant bowling. In reply, Fiji reached their target of 33 in the 26th over with a loss of 6 wickets. Today, Fiji once again bowled first and had Vanuatu all out for 89 runs, but the boys could not reach their target of 90 and were all out for 54 runs in the 26th over. That wraps up sports for tonight. We turn to business now.
Reserve Bank has reduced the lending rate for banks to access the import substitution and export finance facility and the natural disaster rehabilitation facility. Licensed credit institutions, commercial banks and the Fiji Development Bank will be able to access these funds from the Reserve Bank at 1% per annum compared to 2% previously. RBF Governor Barry Whiteside says this decision is part of the effort to actively promote the use of the funds. Import substitution has been allocated $80 million, while disaster rehabilitation is given $40 million. To date, the RBF has approved a combined $70 million under both schemes. Weather time now. Jen, what were today's conditions like? Simply put, Jackie, it was another case of jackets and gumboots. Well, for the capital and the hidden paradise anyway. If you live in Lombasa or the Western Division, then you probably had your sunglasses out. Lombasa's been the hottest center the past few days, and today is no exception. The northern town comes in at 31. Suva and Savasavu have the lowest by a tiny margin, 28 degrees. So what's tomorrow's forecast? No changes, as you can see. It's clouds and showers in the usual places with fine conditions in the rest. Our marine forecast shows southeast winds at 20 to 25 knots with rough to very rough seas. From lovely greenery to a gorgeous blue, here's a picture taken somewhere between Fiji and Rotuma. And we have Taniela Twinadeva to thank for taking this recently and sending it in to Citizens Eyes at fbc.com.fj. That's the photo of the day. Until tomorrow, stay safe and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The headlines once again. Elections likely to be held by 3rd September next year with the Elections Office working on one-day polling. Four new X-ray machines at Nandi Airport to enhance border security and $3 million still owing in FMPF contributions. The poll question now and we ask, should Fiji develop more relationships with other non-aligned countries apart from Russia? Visit our FPC website to answer. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That was your news tonight. Until tomorrow, Modemamba. Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, i got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach knockoff time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM. Nisambulo binaka, oya wana kama na langi, oni nando rumu ziau, mena ziwa kina rua na bisinga, mena moni tiki na baka rumbu kena radio fiji wana nando mibiti bonga ni biyanyano. Nama katalenga na bengo na sasi biyani na tini na kalo kena bimbongi ni bukelulu, kena bima mani walu na bimbongi ni baka rua, mena mbuzi ni walu ninge na maka.